I don't know why there's not more people talking about this organic method of pest control, but once I came across it, I was stunned there wasn't more people talking about it. So today, I wanted to share with you guys my amazing discovery and why I treated my entire backyard with beneficial nematodes. Hi, welcome back. I'm Bree if you are new here. So to catch you up to speed, it is the beginning of December and this is pretty late in the season to be doing any type of pest treating or maintenance, but we haven't had many freezes. Our temperatures are still pretty warm. Today's high was actually in the 70s. And when you want to release beneficial nematodes, you wanna make sure the ground is anywhere from about 40 degrees to about 95 degrees. And we are still in that window. Our ground has not froze. And I decided I wanted to go ahead and jump on this now before spring in hopes to get everything kind of controlled before spring. So let's go ahead and catch you up to speed if you are new here. I've been having a severe problem with grubs this year. I started to notice the problem at the end of summer, but I really didn't think too much of it. But as we were starting our garden renovation, we really started to notice that we had a surplus of grubs in this backyard. And last week, especially as we were going through our pile of compost that pile of compost where majority of the grubs were shown in last week's video that is majority of our compost from all of our old garden beds so while we were moving all of these old garden beds we noticed the grubs so in retrospect this whole garden renovation was kind of a blessing in disguise because if we didn't tear apart this entire backyard i don't know if we would have necessarily noticed this problem during the summer i did notice the problem of my bell peppers especially just not growing the plants were terrible and when i pulled out the plants the root systems were pretty much non-existent and that was actually one of the beds that was one of the worst for the grubs so if you do not know grubs are a pest that will attack your root systems and that's kind of how they feed they do turn into japanese beetles so if you have that problem in your area you probably actually have grub problems as well so this is really interesting i actually pulled out the flyer because i wanted to give you guys a 411 on just everything that this can treat so there are different kinds of beneficial nematodes i did go ahead and get the um, triple blend um, there are different ones but again different nematodes control different things so if you don't know what a nematode is, it's a microscopic worm that naturally lives in the soil. Um, it actually kind of shows a picture right here. Um, you would never probably be able to see them naked to the eye. But a few things that I wanted to mention that they can help with, because these are problems, I mean, everyone has. Grubs, June bugs, squash, vine, boar, larva. Oh my gosh, if I would have known that years ago. Like, I feel like beneficial nematodes are always going to have a space in my garden after learning this information. Um, ticks, we had a surplus of ticks this year. We actually had to go get my dog treated for ticks this year we found multiple on him fleas fly larva fruit flies fire ants ants army worms were super big this year um it also controls different types of aphids and beetles and different types of worms and boars and i mean the list honestly goes on and on and on they treat up to 200 soil dwelling pests apparently that's what it says up top here but i went ahead and actually sprayed this entire backyard this morning i am doing two rounds i bought enough to where i actually have a second batch in my fridge that i will go ahead and spray in this backyard roughly in two weeks i'm hoping the weather will hold out as of right now the next seven days still looks pretty good the whole point of doing two different batches is because most soil dwelling pests have larva phases and you want to make sure you catch all of those larva phases and from my experience in the past with beneficial bugs a couple releases is always kind of necessary to help build up that population so i personally love using beneficial bugs i've released ladybugs almost every single year. Last year was the first year I couldn't get my hands on any ladybugs, but I had a, I had a good amount of ladybugs naturally already here from my previous years of releasing them. I had some huge praying mantis from the year prior. I released praying mantis. We have so many green lace wings as well. We, I found so many eggs over the summer and I would always see them flying around. We had a few in my house from time to time over the summer. There was just an abundance of them. And the one thing that's really cool about beneficial bugs is they actually work together. So you don't have to worry about 
introducing a different beneficial bug and worrying if that will counteract with the other ones that you introduced into your space. Beneficial bugs can kind of be an upfront expense. I will totally admit that. But if you are doing organic methods of gardening, building up those populations can really help you out in the long run, at least in my opinion, over my five year stretch now. I actually have a video I did two summers ago now about all of my tips and tricks on how to release ladybugs. So if you're curious about that, uh, definitely go check that out. But this is actually my very first time releasing the beneficial nematodes. So I'm going to be doing this this winter and then come spring, I'll probably actually dig up different areas and see if I still have a problem and maybe do one more round if need be. But for the most part, these nematodes will overwinter just like any other beneficial bug will. So I'm hoping that I caught it in time, especially with how late our winter really is coming into play. So when I ordered my beneficial nematodes, I got 50 million of them. Again, that's enough for 300 square feet. Half that is roughly the size of my garden, 1,500 square feet. So I came across three different things I found really important when releasing beneficial nematodes to where if you are wanting to do this in your garden, this would be my best advice to you. So first off, when you are mixing up your beneficial nematodes, there will be instructions in your packet. My instructions didn't state this, but it made sense to me when I read multiple forums that ended up stating it. You want to mix your nematodes with filtered water and you want to make sure that filtered water is roughly like room temperature you don't want it to be too cold that won't help activate them and also you want the filtered water because typically right out of the tap or right out of your garden hose there's going to be chlorine in that water and that will affect how your microbes end up living um, chlorine can actually kill them I did read that like watering your garden prior um, since you do need to have everything moist before spraying um, all of your nematodes, which I will get into in a second, that water doesn't necessarily matter as much as the water that you are actually directly mixing the nematodes with. You want to mix them up and let it dissolve just a little bit more by itself to make sure there's no extra chunks in it. And while that is happening, go ahead and water your entire space. You want to make sure everything is damp. That's kind of for any beneficial bug, but especially something like a soil dwelling animal you want to make sure that soil is moist the moment that soil goes dry a lot of those pest and um, bugs that are beneficial they can go dormant and the only thing i really used with this was a simple garden sprayer typically i use these as i spray neem oil or any type of fertilizers and stuff throughout the year but now i have um one for my beneficial nematodes or nematodes i keep messing that up so apparently it's nematodes not nematodes but since i say neem oil so often neem comes across a lot easier as nem so um beneficial nematodes i don't know how often i said that wrong throughout this entire time but i want to correct myself at the very end if i if i was wrong at any point <laughs> I will keep you guys completely updated on this whole situation come spring. For the most part, this is will pretty much be it for this winter. But I do want to make a note. If you have any type of, um, oh, what's it called? It's in here. I think I named it. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Fungus gnats. So I always have fungus gnats come seed starting season. And no matter how many vinegar traps I put out, or solutions I make to help control that in my seed starting area, I can never get to work. So if I have a surplus this year, I might give these a go when it comes to soil starting as well, because you can use these inside greenhouses as well. Um, they, they live in the soil. It's a natural thing. You don't have to worry about like bugs getting all over your house. But I wanted just to kind of mention this. I don't hear many people talk about it often. And I found like this was a discovery of a lifetime. I feel like this would have saved me so many previous years. Um, it's just, it's crazy. I love beneficial insects and I wanted just to make a note of this with you guys today. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you all next week. Bye.